Hello, editing students. For this project, I started Premiere and I opened Project 601. So if I was going to open a project or start a new project, it was 601. So that's the project I'm going to be working in. Um, and when you open it up, it'll look like this. I've got uh, two shots of basically the same thing that continue. Um, let me just set something up here. <laughs> okay, so I fixed that. Um, all right, so it should almost look seamless as you scrub through your timeline uh, back and forth. And uh, let me just go back in here so you can see the source monitor. Again, you've got your, your project pane, your source monitor, we, your program, and your timeline. So, and we'll go into this video tab here. You've got um, one, one clip here. But what we're going to work on today is um, basically fixed effects uh, that you have and adding some other effects in this effects tab. So let's just look at your fixed effects to start out with. They're going to be in your source monitor and you're going to have effect control. So you have an effect controls panel that you're going to work with. And if I double click this clip or even select it once, whoops, you can see right there that these effects will pop up, um, which include your motion, opacity, and time remapping. So we'll do time remapping in another class, but for now, we're just going to work on the opacity and motion. And I just want to take you through these and also note over here in the source monitor that I'm able to scrub around in that source monitor area, which is technically the effect controls panel and scrub around and you can see how it affects my playhead in my program monitor and in my timeline. So it doesn't matter which area you're working in, um, but if I'm working with effects, I'm going to stay up here in the effects controls panel. So let's just look at motion to start with. When we drop that down, we have position, scale, scale width, rotation, anchor point, anti-flicker, filter. You get a couple of options here to play with that are, again, these are fixed effects that are on every, every segment that you put in the timeline. And in opacity, we can change the opacity, which is basically making it transparent. And we've got a couple of options here, which we'll get into down the road. Um, but if we were going to change, say, our scale option of this, we could just go into scale. We can hover over the number and just click back and forth and it'll make it smaller and bigger. We could also open up the scale and drag left and right and change that scale as well, just to change the size of stuff. So what I want to do is actually in this, um, we're going to keep it at a hundred percent for now. Later on, on the next little mini tutorial, I'm going to go in and we're going to, we're going to work with, um, some other options in here, but I just wanted to show you these fixed effects. And again, here's the opacity making it transparent and there's nothing in the background. So it's just going to be black. So the first effect I'd like to drop on one of my segments is say a black and white effect. So I'm going to click in my effects pane over here. And I'm going to look over, I've got some video transitions, effects, transitions, effects, presets, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but we're going to go to this time. We worked with our video transitions and our dissolves, if you remember. Um, but what we're going to work with now is going to our video effects. Um, and you've got a lot of options in here. And in each drop down, it gives you more options. And if you wanted to add one of these effects to a segment in a timeline, all you need to do is click it, drag it, and drop it. So what I'm going to do though, I'm going to do something simple that mostly, you know, most people would pretty much use, which, which would I'd say a black and white. So I'm going to do a search, I'm going to black and, and there it is right there. So I can quickly search up in this field for an effect or something I'm looking for, and it'll kind of filter through and show me uh, what options are available to me. I'm going to click on this black and white effect. I'm going to drop it and drag it on the timeline on the segment I'm working with and just let go. And you can see it added it here. We have a black and white option now. Close these so you can see this, but now I have a black and white option there. And it turned it black and white for me. So now we have a black and white clip. And if we wanted it to fade from black and white to color, we could go back to what we learned before with the video transitions. Notice there's nothing there because it's only searching for black and so once I get rid of that search, 
I'll be able to actually open up the dissolve and I can add a cross dissolve here. Now this cross dissolve starts out pretty far. So the video is going to go dark and then it's going to pop in. So I want that dissolve to start right at the beginning of that second clip on, vi on um, video one. So then it dissolves over the other clip. So it'll start to fade out on this segment as this segment starts to come in. So we get no flicker or black um, little clips starting to show through. So now we get a nice transition from black and white to color. So let's, so let's add another effect. Let's go for a blur and we'll grab one of these blur options, drop it on the segment and you can see it adds that one now. So now we have our black and white and we have our blur. So unlike the black and white, it doesn't make it black and white. Um, like how black and white makes it black and white right away. The blur doesn't have the blur right away. You've got to adjust the blur and how much blur you want. You could hover over the blue numbers and drag left or right or grab this little switch here and make it blurry. And now you can go blurry black and white to color. So you would do that with all these other effects. So it's the same type of idea. As you add effects, they build on top of each other, and then you adjust the parameters inside the effects. So what I'd like you to do is go through your timeline, open up Project 601, and make it black and white. You know, drop a blur, play with another effect. Um, get used to just working and seeing the different parameters that are available to you in the effect control. All right, now onto the second part. Let's say we didn't want to put the dissolve in here. We do have an option to change the opacity of a segment on the timeline itself instead of, you know, going from, you know, one clip or one segment to another with this effect because we're using the cross dissolve to kind of like slowly fade it in. We could move that cross dissolve and right now it'll be just a quick cut in and out. But if you click on this little wrench in the timeline display settings, you'll have an option to show video keyframes. Select that, and these lines will appear. And what you're able to do with those lines is toggle a keyframe at a certain point. So what I would do is, on video track two, just double click it, it'll open up and it'll give you this option with these little arrows and this add remove keyframe option. Bring your playhead to the start a video track one, this segment, Central Park, New York City, Lake Scene, and add a keyframe. What this keyframe is going to do is going to hold this position at 100%. So we see the full picture. Let's take our playhead and go to the end, add another keyframe right there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go and we're going to drag it down. So if you could see as well, the numbers that are changing from 100% down to zero, what's going to do, what it's going to do is make this transparent. So it's going to start at 100% and go to zero, almost very similar to how we had the dissolve on there. So you can see as I bring this up to, you know, the effect becomes more intense. And as I drag it down, gives us that dissolve effect by using keyframes. It's a start point and an end point. And then the computer will do the math in between to figure out where the percentage needs to be to get from 100 to zero in this short period of time. So if we go back up in our effect controls panel and just open up the opacity, because that's what we're changing, we can see that there are keyframes in here that we put in in the timeline. You can also add these keyframes up here in the effects control panel. So you can add these effects as well with say a size. So if we looked at motion and we look at the position scale would be our size. So if we wanted to say, have this video shrink at say this point where I am on the timeline, what I could do is add a keyframe by clicking on this little stopwatch 
toggle animation. When I do that, it'll drop a keyframe in. Let me just go back here real quick. It'll drop a keyframe in on the position that my playhead is on. And then I could scrub forward a little bit. And I'm going to go in my timeline just because I can see the segment and where I'd like it to play out. Or if I want to play it, it's going to go quick. But say at this point, we'll just go to the end, the last frame. We could add another keyframe or we could just change that scale and it automatically will drop a keyframe in there. I'll do that again real quick. So just keep your eyes up over here. As I change that position, or I change the scale, it'll automatically add a keyframe. So it'd be the same thing if we did position or rotation. So I'm gonna bring that in a little bit, make that a little smaller. So it'll do the math from it being full size here to being half size here. All right, let's do another keyframe. And this time we'll do, uh, let's do uh, rotation. So I can put it in the same, we'll put it in the same place. And these little arrows right here will jump back and forth to your keyframes really quickly. These little arrow options right here. So we'll drop another one. So rotation, so let's click a keyframe in there and we can jump to the other one. And then what we'll do is we'll rotate this. You have a little option for like a little wheel here as well. But you know, we'll rotate it 100 and here. We can even click on it and type in 180 degrees. So we got 180 degrees. So it goes upside down. So now what'll happen, it'll animate your video. Again, just by putting in these keyframes. And if you need to move a keyframe, you can click it and move it. So if you wanted that to start earlier, you can move that keyframe earlier. You could select keyframes and delete them. You could select groups of keyframes and copy them and paste them to say another segment on the timeline. But the idea behind a keyframe, it's a start point and it's an end point. And then if we wanted to, um, we could put some, we can put a keyframe in the, you know, in the middle here too. And say so let's go back the other way. Let's have it spin around the other way. Okay. We're going to open up another project. We're going to open up 602 for this one. And what we're going to do here, we're going to use something called a track mat. And the idea behind a track mat is basically creating a transition in some other program, say After Effects, usually uh, utilizing Photoshop, um, creating your own custom kind of transitions. There's a lot of these transitions you can find online as well and add them to your videos. So the goal here is uh, when we go to this, this shot of this park, we're going to actually, you know, do a, a special transition to this boat. It's something that doesn't exist in these video transitions, but we're going to create it uh, based off of an effect that was already created for us. It's called an animated track mat. So it's going to be already in your folder uh, labeled video. And I'm just going to play it so you can see what it does. So the transition, if you can imagine, is going to go from this park scene to this boat scene and it's going to have this effect transitioning over it but you're not going to see the black and you're not going to see the white it's going to break apart in here kind of like that little pattern so the way that this works is that you need to first add an effect to the segment so the segment effect that we're going to use it's a track mat key so we'll go to the effects and we'll go to track, mat, and there we go. It pops up right there. Now, I don't want to apply the track mat to the entire segment. I just want to apply it to the part of the segment that is going to have the effect. Because if we apply it to the entire segment, it's just not going to work out right. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to cut um, this segment in a little bit of a, you know, in half. <laughs> so what we could do is, well, let's just grab the razor tool for now. We'll hover over where the playhead starts at the next frame. And then this way we've got this option to just have a separate piece of video here to work with. So the scene 
up to this point is fine, but here's where we want that effect to take place. So what I want to do is actually put this effect on top of the central uh, park option. Let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm just going to grab this. You can notice there's no audio here. That's why there's no audio here on your track indicators. So I'm just going to grab this clip and lay it over the top. And the way that it's set up for us, it's perfectly set up already for the length that we need. So we've got video track one, video track two, video track three, and all these layers. And of course, on our top layer is the animated track mat. That's what we're going to see. If I was to turn that off, we'd see what's underneath it and so on down the line. We want to keep those on. So what I, what I would need to do now is actually apply the effect not to the track map, but to the, the segment below it. Because what we're going to do is apply an effect to the segment below it and say, you know what, take a look at what's happening above it, because that's what we want to apply this effect to. So it's a little bit more intense than just a regular drag and drop in effect. So I'm going to take this track mat key and drop it on the Central Park New York City fountain scene. We're not going to see anything right away. But what we need to do is go to our effect controls for the Central Park New York City fountain scene and go and take a look at this option called track mat key. That's the effect that we just put in there. And what we want it to do is we want this to look above to video track three. So the mat option is going to be video track three because if we notice this segment is on video track three. So we're telling this effect, you know what, take a look at video track three. And we want something to happen, you know, and affect what's going on there. So what we're going to do is then take the composite using, we're going to change that to a Luma because what we want to do is affect the brightness and the darkness. We want to Luma key this instead of a, say chroma key, taking out the green. So when we, work, when we work with a Luma, it's working with the brightness and darkness. So here, we're going to choose Luma. And once we choose Luma, it's going to take out that black and white information, but you know, keep it in a way that it's going to affect what's happening in our timeline. So watch as I play this out now. That effect has been added to the Central Park New York City Fountain based on the animated track map. Now, if you do a search and you go online and you look for animated track mats, you're going to find a bunch of video clips that people have created that you can grab for free and have custom transitions, or you could make custom transitions. That's the idea behind this. It's going one level deeper than just grabbing a video effect and dropping it on the timeline. It's now telling it, hey, look at the one above, and we're going to work together on this to create this effect. So this is an animated track mat. And then the effect is the, is the track mat key. So what I'd like you to do is open project 602 and create this effect. All right, for the next project, we're going to do project 603. So we'll go to file, open project, I'm going to choose 603. All right. All right. So in this project, what we're going to do is we're actually going to key out the green screen. Keying means basically we're going to take out and this information and we're going to make it transparent. We're going to create a, uh, an alpha channel. And um, you could do this pretty much with any color, but typically it's done with a green or blue screen um, just because of the colors that exist. If I was to say, try to key out the red here on his shoulder strap. It would take out some of the red tones in his jacket and in his face. Um, but green is a pretty safe color. And there's also special color green for chroma key and blue for chroma key. Um, so keep that in mind. If you were just to go buy regular green paint, um, there's actually specific color for that. Um, so just like we were using the other effects before, I'm just going to rearrange my workspaces the way that I like them. And in here we can just go to, well, the effect is, we could just maybe even see if, if key comes up, but it's ultra key is the key we're looking for. That's the effect. And, you know, as you guys start playing around with Premiere more and more, you start to experiment with the different effects. 
Um, you know, but I think the majority of the stuff that you guys will come in contact with and edit would be, like I said, straight dissolves. Maybe dip to white, dip to black, fade to black, um, blurs, black and white effects. Um, you know, but you can start playing with some of these other effects and then like, different types of keys and whatever. Track mat is kind of nice, track mat key, because you can create your own effects. But in this case, we're going to switch to uh, just doing green screen, just, you know, keying out that background color. And it, it's pretty simple. If you grab the ultra key and drop it on top of the second layer. Now, here's the thing, too. When we take away the background, because it is layers, it's going to show what's underneath him. So what we need to do is make sure there's something underneath them. We don't want the green screen on video track one and then the Central Park Laura walking on track two. That needs to be in the background. So I'm gonna double click or just click on uh, Jeff Jacobs green screen and go to my effect controls. And I've got some options here. And again, depending on your screen, if you need to move these around to see more or less, you could totally do that. You know, If you're gonna be working with some keyframes up here, you might wanna see more. If you're not, you probably want to see less. So here's our ultra key option that we just added. We just added this. And with the key comes a lot of other things. Match generation, cleanup, spill suppression, and color correction as well, which I'll want you guys to play with after. Um, but what I'm looking to do is sample the key color. I mean, if we had an exact match, we could put in the exact numbers, which would be really nice. Um, but in this case, we don't. And if I look at the green screen, it's a little darker on the bottom, a little brighter on the top. So I'm going to try to sample in between, somewhere in between, maybe in this area, to try to get like a, a decent selector. Let's see. All right, so that's a start. Um, just clicking on this eyedropper, and then as you bring it around, it samples the different colors. So in this case, I'll sample this over here. And you can see it's not that clean of a key yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, say, to some of my other options here. Let's say tolerance and play with one of the tolerance. I'm not really seeing too much with that one. So let's go to Mac cleanup. Choke's going to clean up around the edge of his jacket. We can soften that a little bit. Uh, spill suppression. Let's see, let me go to transparency for that. Try to get rid of some of that green. You start to play around and tweak it a little bit. This video, I think, is standard deaf video. Um, so there's not a lot of information in there, but it's enough for us to be able to play with and try to get a clean key for him. You know, as we look around, making sure the microphone, nothing in the microphone's disappearing. He's looking pretty clean around the edge. Um, you know, you just kind of scrub through too to see, you know, if you're seeing anything that looks pretty bad. There's a reflection that pops up over here. Um, so it's kind of hard to deal with some types of video, but you try to make it work. And um, let's just go down spill, just so you know anything spill, if there's green bouncing off of the green screen onto him, um, that tries to work with it as well to try to get rid of some of the green that you might see spilling on somebody. Luma, again, it's gonna deal with the brightness in the dark areas. You can actually see in this bottom corner as I change the Luma options gets rid of some of the dark areas. Uh, we could mess with the saturation, you know, take it out, make him black and white. Um, we can mess with his hue, uh, change him there, and then we can also change, you know, making him brighter or darker. Kind of like you guys remember, I think, the uh, iPod commercials back in the day. Something similar to that. Um, yeah, so you got, you got a lot of play here, just with the chroma key alone. It's not just taking out the green, but you've got a lot of options beyond that as well. So I'm going to ask you to open up this project, which is Project 603, and use the Ultra Keyer. The notes are going to be up on Sakai for you, so you can kind of follow the steps of what I've done or follow my outline. And um, yeah, so this is probably going to be one of the projects that you're going to have to submit as well. So just a heads up on that. So enjoy and have fun.